Hello, good day. Welcome back to Go on the Run. And today I want to show you yet another feature in Pocket Base that have to do with relations and filtering. So let's jump in. The place I want to start with is to jog your memory about the relationship we have between our collections. So previously I wasn't putting the user um, collection on the diagram, so that comes with um, pocket base and it helped reduce the number of things that we have to look at. But for today, it's going to be important. Um, in, in the expressions that we've seen so far, we've been able to navigate the relationship forward. By that I mean, let's take a look at, let's say, an item. So here's an item and it has a relationship to a label or a set of labels. We can say we're looking for items and we want to return items, but only if those items, their label matches some particular um, name on a label. And so we were able to do exactly that. Um, and so I'm not going to go through that again, but that was you going forward, right? Because we can see from items, we can think of it as the item, the field that we're navigating is within item and we can just keep walking along it until we get to the collection and then we can look for the fields on that collection. So we did this already. The one we want to talk about today is how do we go backwards? And in order to, <laughs> to imagine going backwards, well, this is going to break your mind a little bit because if we were here on labels and we want to find all labels, so this is what we're working on. We're looking for labels, but the condition we want to test or check is on items. And so maybe we want to find all labels that are attached to item where the name is some specific value. Again, you got to take a minute to think about that. I want to find all labels that are attached to items that have a specific name. So I am kind of navigating this relationship backward, but remember from labels itself, I don't have anything that really tells me which item this label is attached to. If I started from items, I have something, a field that tells me, oh, these are the labels that are attached to this item. But from the labels, I don't have anything that says this. Another one to look at is here's our cart. Our cart, when a user creates a cart, there's a relationship that points to the owner of that cart. So if I start at a cart, I can see who owns the cart, right? We can navigate the user's field on the cart to go to say, oh, let's find the username, the email address, and all this other good stuff. So I'd like to focus on our user table and our carts table. So let's say we wanted to ask the question, which users haven't completed their order yet. So what we really want is just the list of users, right? Like let's say the username, but it, we only want those users who have a shopping cart where the ordered field is false. So the thing is to answer this question would be easy if we had a link from the users table to all the cart they own, right? then it would be easy. That would be navigating forward like we showed previously. We know how to do that, but we don't have that. We do, if we start with a user's table, we don't have a link going to their shopping cart. We only have from the carts table coming back to the user. So what if, what if we had a field? It's just, I'm gonna put an asterisk here to say it, so it's not a real field, but some dynamic field that would be created when we want. It would just be added for us. We don't have to do anything. And it had this name, carts via user. So basically saying for this user, it's all their carts. And how are we going to get all their carts? Via the user um, field that the carts collection have. So you can see a pattern here, right? Carts is the collection we actually wish we could navigate, right? To find, to use the orders field on carts. But in cart, we have a link called users. So that's our backlink. That's like our backdoor to the user's collection. So what if in user's collection, this 
field was dynamically created for us. And so now we have a way to get to the card collection. So then if this is true, or if we can have this, then our query becomes really simple. Let's think of it from an SQL point of view. And if you don't know SQL, don't worry. It's, we're going to keep it simple. Essentially, I can say, I want to select user names from users. So this, I want to operate on the user's table. That's why if you're thinking about our API, we'll be sending our filter expression to the user's collection and not to the car's collection because we want fields from the user's collection. But then our filter now expression is going to have this value. We're going to be essentially thinking where cards via user that order is equals to false. Now I'm writing it here in SQL ish. So to, to illustrate the idea, of course, when we use pocket based filter expression, we have to, you know, use the, um, question mark. And the reason why we have to use question mark, and I'll show you that in the documentation is that even if you have a single relationship like we have here, where one card is related to a single user, when you go through the back reference, any one user could have multiple cards, right? And so for that reason, you're going to be testing a field on a collection. This dynamic field that I just shown here on my users collection, guess what? Pocket base creates it for you and I'll be able to show you that. So let's jump to the documentation. So here I am in um, my pocket base collection. And so let's just go straight to docs by clicking docs here. And now let's scroll down to relations, work with relations. And here's an example. So if we zoom in a bit here, you can see that as an illustration to give you this um, example where you have a post. And so you can imagine you're building a block site where users can make a post and then other users can comment on it. The users who comment on the post, of course, they have to, you have to somehow know which post they comment on. You have a message for their comment and you have to know which user made the comment. Let's say, well, let me find all posts in which users have said hello in their comment to this post. Okay. Or maybe it could be, I want to find all posts in which users have said something nice or something nasty, whatever. So in that way, you can use back reference and the way this, is done is if you click here, you'll see the way back reference work is it creates a unique field with this structure, the reference collection via reference field. So for example, in the case where we we're on the post and remember post doesn't know anything about comments, but what we can say is we want to access comments for this post via the post field. All right. So if we scroll back up, we want to do the selection here or run our query here, but we're going to say we want to use the comments collection via the post field. And that essentially gives me the comment for this post. Anytime you use back reference, the value is always going to be a um, multiple relationship. Right. And the reason for that is, is if you think about it, where a post have a singular relation, a comment as a singular relationship to a post. Well, if one comment have a singular relationship to a post, you can have multiple comments pointing to that same post. So if I'm going to try and find all the comments by going through the comments via the post field, then by definition for that one post, which I'm navigating backwards to its comments, then I could end up with multiple comments. So keep that in mind. All right. I think if that is really hard for you to understand, I'd say spend some time just trying it, thinking through it, and definitely, of course, reading the documentation. So like I said, we want to find all users who haven't um, completed their um, purchase yet. So their shopping cart is still open. So the first thing we do is we'll start with shopping carts and look for all shopping carts that are false. Basically the order is still open 
and then navigate and find those users, which we can see here, but we can go through the user link and I'll show you what our results look like. Now, one thing you have to do is go through your collections, make sure that your API rule is set to um, allow um, unauthenticated access because I don't want to spend time worrying about authenticating. So let's start off by seeing what we have. So let's start by doing this. Maybe we should make this a little bit bigger. Let's close this. And so if I just look for all the carts, well, then there it is. All right. Those are all the shopping carts that we have. If I then say I want to limit it to the fields user because that's what really I, I really want, right? I mean, it's just the users. Um, and then I can, of course, say since they haven't closed their shopping cart, I really just want where orders equals to false. So that sort of get me what I want right there. Okay. Now, I can also say that, oh, let's expand the user field, right? So let's expand user field. And of course, since it's expanded, I have to select for ex that expand field now. And I still want this condition. So when I do this, now I have this mess, right? And so the thing I'm really looking for is just the username, which is this guy. And so now I have to say, and for the fields, I want expand that user, that username, which is just basically navigating this relationship. Expand that user, that username. And so here you go. So this is my result. I have that these two users and their username haven't completed their order. Now we only have two, um, you know, cards anyway. So to see if this is really working, we should go back here and set one of these cards to complete it or order. And then if we go back here and we run our query again, we can see, yes, it's indeed, it is working because this user did not complete their order. All right, so that works. But notice, I want you to keep in mind what this result look like. If you're on the client, you'd have to navigate, you know, items, expand, user to get to the username. So it, oh, the thing we're looking for is three levels deep within this list, okay? And so if we have a large number of things, we'll be re returning these extra fields that really we don't need. And so that's gonna be extra data. So keep that in mind. So, okay. So this is a little bit more nested structure is what I mean. Let's try the other way. Let's go here. And we'll close this, close this. So now let's look at back reference. So we're going to start off by just running our query, um, doing a select against all users on our users collection, because that's where we want to really find the users who haven't closed their order or posted their order. So let's do that. So of course we get our two users back. Now we really just care about their username. So let's just restrict that. So we just select those fields only and we don't bring back any extra data. Okay, so, so good so far. Now remember I said that our, this fields via users, this dynamic field that pocket base creates for us for back referencing, it's not a real field. So we can't just select it. Like if I include it in the selection, you're not going to see it. All right? It's not there. So Written the query on this is not going to return that field. And by the way, we can see this on the UI also that the field actually is there, but it's not there for a selection. So let's go here to our users. And if we type carts and you can see it's right there, carts via users, and you can do all kinds of things, but this is just when you're doing the query. This is what the, the filter expression is. So it shows up here, but we can't see it here because it's not there. Okay, so let's come back. And so what we can do is say, expand this cars via user um, field that is actually in, that is sort of dynamically created. And of course, since it's expanded, we know that it's gonna be in the expand field. So in order to see it, we need to say, select not only the username, but the expand field. And so now when we do this, we can see, sure enough, there is that field. So now that we know it's there, we can include it in our filter and expression. So we can say, Carts via user that ordered, right? And remember, this is going to be a collection because it's multiple, it's an array. 
And we can see this here. It already shows us that this is an array. But let's just, since we have here, you know, this user, Joe, um, is close his order. So I'm going to send this. And when I send it this way, you will see that now we only get back one user who hasn't um, closed their order. And we can see that that's expanded here. Now, here is something that is going to be a little bit confusing. You see, we only have user um, 4833, blah, 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 right? What if so I want to add a new shopping cart? Let's just say the user, John Doe, who currently doesn't have any on order item, decide to create an order. And let's say we give him a 30% discount for whatever. And the payment method is, let's say, PayPal. Let me say create. And now we go back here. And we do send our query again. Notice that what we see now is for this user, John Doe, we see both their orders coming through. So you might be thinking, you know what? So did my query actually fail? I, I said I wanted to just see users who have orders that are open. I remember what this says. This is a query that says, hey, find thing where we have, you know, at least one equals fail. And that is true. At least one equal false, uh, not at least one equal fail. At least one equals true. And that is exactly what we're seeing here. We're not looking for exactly, you know, where in the collection there's one thing equals um, false. It's at least one. So this is still working. What might be confusing is the fact that because we're showing the expanded field, it's showing all of the records. But remember, it's just the user whom we care about. We don't care about all of this. So why don't we just drop that? And we don't want to expand on it, but we can still test on it. And so there you go. So I just wanted to show you that just in case you're playing around with this and you had different users with different orders, you might say, oh, my thing is not working. But keep in mind what we're checking here. We're checking at least one order is false. So that's it. I hope this video helped you. If it did, please leave a comment. I appreciate it. Um, thumbs up the video, leave a comment. That really helps. I appreciate the people who've been leaving comments saying that, hey, this really helped me. This is exactly what I've been looking for. Um, if you've made it this far and you're not a subscriber, please consider being a subscriber. I'd love to have you as part of the community here. If you are one of my subscribers, um, appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I appreciate you sticking around and coming back. Mikhail, thank you so much for being a supporter, a Patreon supporter. If you'd like to support the channel, here are some other ways that you can do so. And take care. See you in the next video. Bye.